guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Thank you for joining me today. I have Brandank back on the line. Brandank, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing fantastic. Today we're going to talk about the rise of Pekka. Well, I guess she's already risen. She's been around for a while now back in the meta in a really, really big way. I got to ask you, this is the deck that we're going to talk about today. It's a very interesting deck with Royal Hogs as the win condition. No kind of Battle Ram in there. No Miner along with the Poison. Also Zappies in there and the E-Wiz. Uh, tell us like how this deck works. What archetype does this deck fall into? And today's going to be finishing off a Grand Challenge live, guys. So we'll hop into a match in just a second. Yeah, so I think this fits most into the split lane pushing archetype where um, a lot of times you want to facilitate split lane pushes by like splitting zappies in the back and then going split royal hogs especially when their opponent has fireball mm -hmm. but mainly i like this pekka deck because it's strong against lava hound so primarily i don't like like a lot of pekka decks right now because they're mostly weak to like a lot of air decks but this deck has three different kinds of air counters and is also pretty good against graveyard because of um the magic archer and the electro wizard so i think it's pretty strong right now along with the poison too Awesome. What do you think that, I'm not sure if you noticed, like, there's a poll right now in the game, right, where you can vote. I'm, I'm curious what my viewers voted too, by the way. I'm going to I'm gonna sell myself out right now. And I voted on the Archers over the Dark Goblin. What did you vote for, Brand Brandank? And uh, let me see the results right now where they're at. Because uh, you mentioned split lane pushing. Right now, Dark Goblin is in the lead by just 2% or 4% over the Archers. Uh, but I'm curious... If the archers get a buff, do you do you think that they'd be viable in a deck like this, along with that split lane mentality? Yeah, for sure. I think that they'd um, control decks such as like Golem archers or uh, stuff like Expo would be a lot better because right now the archers died to Barbaro, which is why they're not seen pretty much at all. And I think Dark Goblin is already strong enough as is, and it has a clear purpose in a lot of different bait decks. So I think that buffing archers would be um, like sort of my preference, but I can definitely see how people would want Dark Goblin too, because it's a fun card to use. Nice, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Like Dark Goblin's a, be a f more fun card, but I think it's less deserving of a buff, just personally. But anyway, guys, let me know what yeah. you voted for in the comments below. Brandon, you know what? Let's go ahead and uh, hop right into a match here. I like that this, oh, you're already in, sweet, man. You yeah, I just done do it. Yeah. You know how to do this, I love it. And you're not even <laughs> O right now, so hopefully we can pick up that 12 win. And it's been a while since I've done a live Grand Challenge video. Guys, I like to switch it up, even though the guys mainly prefer ladder. I like to at least include maybe one GC uh, type match a week. And it's good, too, because all the card levels are standardized. Even so is top ladder, but it's nice to see kind of a different meta. So, Randig, as far as starting plays go, uh, what is your... Is, is splitting Zappies pretty much the go-to? Yeah, pretty much. Um, sometimes I like to cycle Barb Barrel at the bridge. Um, sometimes Magic Archer in the back, but mostly it's just Split Zappies is the best for me. Okay. Oh, it's that new E Drag deck, I bet, that you're going against. Yeah. I feel like Definitely this minor control e deck. <laughs> what do you think of the E Drag? What are your first impressions? I think he's pretty balanced, but he's a little bit too strong because I see him a lot in like pretty much every single GC deck right now. So maybe he needs like a slight nerf, maybe to his health or probably his health is the best way to go about it. But I think right now he's one of the most like balanced legendaries that's ever been released. So I, I like him so far. I agree with you. I, I tweeted this out the other day, but I'll say it again that I think that I've been very critical of a lot of the cards that released recently. Like uh, the recruits were way too strong and OP when they entered the game. Royal Hogs and uh, Royal, uh, Royal Hogs and Snowball, excuse me, were really bad when they entered the game. Goblin Giant was really awful when they entered the game. And it feels like they've been missing the mark with a lot of these balancing on the new cards. But E-Drag, I agree with you. you. Maybe you can make an argument that it needs a little bit of a, a nerf, but but either way, it's it's really interesting, compelling card, and it's pretty well balanced, I think. But anyway, back to this deck here. So we talked about starting plays. You know, we're just about to approach double elixir time. Maybe you can kind of run through how you play this deck differently if you do it all in, in single versus double elixir. Yeah, so in single elixir, I, I was sort of waiting for him to make a lot of moves. Um, right now, I might be a little bit more, um, you know, I might have a little more freedom to go for more Royal Hog pushes, so. Okay. Zappies and Ewiz, like the double stun effect. You must be a big fan of that in this deck. Oh yeah, I I don't think this is a great matchup for me mainly because um, he has the, the the fire spirits, which do really well against the the Royal Hogs. Royal Hogs so yeah. Really, yeah. Fire spirits for that reason, I think that they're a little bit, maybe a little bit underrated in terms of uh, 
getting a little zappy. Yeah, way. I definitely see them in a lot of meta decks right now. Yeah. They're really good. I, I just need to be careful with split hogs, so um, I can make sure that he doesn't get fire cured value. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is going to be a very interesting. So you put, spit one uh, one hog, and you actually stop that Prince's Charge. It's actually a really good play. Then you have Magic Archer ready at the bridge. This could be Tower Down. Oh, Miner comes in last second. Can Pekka get a swing? No. So we're about 15 seconds into overtime here. He's uh, a, an aggressive play with the Fire Spurs, does not get to the tower. Barb is going to answer that. And now that kind of frees you up to play an aggressive Royal Hog, because uh, all he has is Royal Ghost. So let's see what Brandon does here. There he goes. He splits again. You, you seem to like that split, huh? Go in one Hog. Yeah, Especially I like that. Especially if there's a Charging Prince around there. Yeah. Ooh, sure. the Magic Archer. Magic Archer OP. Oh man, one more uh, hit. I, thought, I, I was hoping for one more hit, yeah. One more hit would have uh, given you the match there, so here we go again. It needs a big defense here in the right lane. Royal Ghost is going to do a really good job, and look at that stun, man. Ewiz, I feel like Ewiz is not getting a lot of love right now because everybody's playing the new Electro Drag, but Ewiz still fits. We were talking off air, too, and you even mentioned this that Ewiz does, like, a lot of these decks that are winning right now. Oh, there we go. There it is. Nice. GG's, man. That was a tricky matchup too, and you did well. Yeah, at the end I I I played into him. I played my Royal Hogs right into his fire spirits, but um I knew that if the Royal Ghost was pushed a little bit further back, then I could try to tank with the magic archer and get some like one hit in and that's all I needed pretty much. Okay, sounds so. good. You can feel free to hop into the next match. And let me ask you, like, oh, you're already in. Wow, sweet. Uh, yeah. I mentioned it while we were watching you play, but you did split one pig to the to one tower. Is that something that you just did because of the Charging Prince, or is that something that you do other situations as well? So I do it other situations when I see that there's, like, a large tank in one lane or just, like, a larger unit in one lane, and one hog alone can do a lot of damage. So I decided to split one hog in that lane just to uh, apply a little bit of pressure in that one particular lane. I like that. I like that play because yeah. it's something, it's it's very like niche and very, very minor, but it's something that I really haven't seen a lot of people do that often. So uh, here yeah. we go. Just going to start out playing a little bit of defense here. Figure this guy's, oh man, is it a golem deck or is it something weird? <laughs> Who knows in this meta right now? Yeah, it looks like a golem deck. I actually, I know this guy. Um, okay. He's a pretty good Bulgarian player. Well, sorry, there's a... No worries. I'm in a classroom, so there's like <laughs> um, the bell just went off. So hopefully it wasn't too loud. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that wasn't that wasn't loud at all for us. All right, all right. Okay. All right. So good job blocking that lumberjack. So it's definitely a golem deck now that we see the the, the lumberjack and the and the night witch in there. So it's a double dragon golem. Man, it feels like E drag just like has a home in any deck at this point. Yeah, he had a pretty nice king activation. I probably shouldn't have played. Um, my rogue ghost there probably should just played a barb barrel for that lumberjack mm -hmm. because getting getting his king activated is really helpful against royal hogs. Mm -hmm. So we have zap. Yeah, right now I'm just, I'm, I just gotta play really slow because mm -hmm. I, I don't want to play like an early Pekka and then yeah, give him up and goal him up afterwards. Yeah. So are you going to? So you're slow playing this right now. If he drops a golem at the bridge, which he's probably going to do in the left lane, are you going to just Pekka immediately at the bridge, or how do you handle that night witch? Oh. Forget it. And I imagine that's... Yeah, I think mainly... Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I didn't want him to uh, um, have an opportunity to golem up in, in front of the Night Witch, so I just applied a little bit of pressure in the opposite lane. Perfect. He's doing a pretty good job just trying to buy time until double elixir. He finally gets there, so now he's going to... You know... Okay, so he drops Whoa, a at the a, bridge. It's kind of a mad lad sort of play. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't like it either because obviously... You didn't have to even worry about the Night Witch, which is really your biggest threat, having Pekka being, like, your big stopper. Interesting tornado, too. Yeah. Look, he heard you say all those nice things about him. He's like, yeah, right, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw this one. Nah, I'm just joking. It's definitely not thrown. It's definitely anybody's game still at this point. Uh, when if, if or when he does drop a golem, let's say he drops one, not a Night Witch, let's just say he drops a golem behind the King Tower... Is this the type of deck that you'll attack with opposite lane Royal Hogs, just like you would a normal Hog Rider, or is the fact that there are five like, oh, we'll see in a second. Yeah, no, I'll usually defend first and then push okay. for Hogs afterwards. 
And look at that. That's the one downside to the, uh, the E-Drag. And beautiful Poison Bow here. Going to protect that P.E.K.K.A. from the Night Witch. P.E.K.K.A. does get a little sidetracked there, but you don't eat the Golem Death Damage. I don't think you get hit, at least. Yeah. I'm, I'm perfectly fine here. And I played all my savvies in the same lane because he just wasted his Poison earlier, so... Mm -hmm. I'm a little more, more liberal about doing that right now. Yeah. Is there a, so you said this is a split lane push deck. Is there any part of you that considers uh, hit him with Royal Hogs in the left lane here, or are you just going all in? Or you're going all in? We're all, all right. in right now. All right. Yeah. And good poison value again for you. You'll take it. And that's probably GG right there. Looks Boom. like it, yep. Pekka with the final blow. Man. All right. The reason why I went for Pekka... Um, in front of those like zapiers because I knew he still didn't have poison cycle and he was wasting a lot of elixir with that tornado. Um, I knew that he would have a hard time defending just a peck at the bridge because he was a little bit down in elixir. So mm -hmm. I knew okay. that I could I could pretty liberally just play my peck at the bridge and get a huge counter push. Man, this deck is nasty, dude. Do you uh while you search for your your twelfth match? Oh man, you're already in. Jeez. I got it. Yep. No wait times. This is a beautiful video. It's gonna be a fast moving one, man. Especially if you get this win. Uh, in before eleven and three. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask uh, if you, yeah. for my free-to-play players out there, or people who just haven't, uh, uh, you know, unlocked any of the le all the legendary cards, what would you sub in for the uh, the Magic Archer? I would say Flying Machine is pretty good in that spot. Yeah. Um, Flying Machine is com commonly played instead of Zappies, but I think that I like Zappies a little bit more okay. um, against some matchups. Yeah. Like Plus against you match lane. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, like, yeah. Just against Pekka too. It's a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, I would say so. So Definitely this... also against like some hog decks. I like it too. Oh man, it's the no win condition deck you're going against. I hate going against this deck, man. The OP Sam deck. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty nasty. It Most is. Most of these matchups end up as oh. a draw or a loss for Pekka. I stand corrected. Oh yeah, so actually yeah, no, now more often than not they'll play Royal Hogs in this okay. deck. Okay, alright. Yeah. Instead of Cannon Cart? Yeah. Whoa, wait, why did it? That's interesting. The Zappies did not split like I, I played them. I played them in middle, and huh. for some reason they didn't split. That's weird, but... That is weird. All right. I think maybe the, the aggro dunches were hogs, and they started, like, going the same way Shifting as they started a little attacking. Bit. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. All right, so Magic Archer is going to clean up very nicely here for you. Almost takes out those Barbarians, and now you just got to deal with this. What do you have in here? Okay, you <laughs> have the big Pekka. All right. Uh, yeah, I wanted to save sure my Electro Wizard right. for the Flying Machine. So I didn't. I, I chose not to use it on on the Royal Ghost. Gotcha. Uh, how do you decide when playing Royal Hogs? I mean, maybe this answer is super obvious, but how do you decide when to split them versus when to push them same lane? I mean, if they have like Fireball in hand or something, that's really obvious. But like any other kind of indicators that you're looking for? Yeah. So usually I'll, I'll split Royal Hogs if um, I know that the matchup sort of. Like they can, they can really easily switch lanes, in which case I want damage in both lanes. Mm -hmm. So matchups such as like Mortar, um, I'll try to play my Real Hogs split, so that because I know that how flexible Mortar is and how often they can switch lanes. So I want to get try to get damage in you know multiple lanes. Okay, sounds good. And is this the type of deck like final? <laughs> Sorry, I'm asking like 20 questions about this deck. I should oh yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, is this the type of deck that you? Do you prefer to push the same lane as the opponent, or does it not really matter to you that much? Or it doesn't matter that much. Yeah, I, 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 if, if it's like something like Golem, it sort of depends on the situation. Um, sometimes I like to push, you know, um, same lane after like a counter burst. It just sort of depends on like what um, the deck is and like what the situation has been so far in the match. Gotcha. I usually try to push same lane. Okay. That was really good. That was a good magic archer. Yeah, it was. Magic Archer has to be one of the, the best cards in the game, I feel like. Oh yeah. It's like, it's definitely shifted the meta a ton to the point where like, a lot of other archetypes aren't viable or as viable because of, of the Magic Archer. Mm -hmm. So Pekka comes down, that leaves you with a Bar Barrel and Royal Ghost for this, but this is gonna be tough to defend here in the right. You're definitely gonna, yeah, it's gonna be GG. All right, making the video a little bit longer. I appreciate it, Brand Dang. Thank you for extending. <laughs> Are you there? I might have lost Brand Dank. I think he might have lagged out there or something, or I lost him on the line. 
Uh, when I get him back, I'll edit right into the next match, guys. Matches. Oh, here we go. And more like opinion videos. Just kind of keep it fresh. But here we go. We well, got yeah. Randig back on the line, guys. He kind of lagged out there, and he had like a phone issue at the end. So we did take an L. He said he probably would have lost either way, though, uh, after he placed that P.E.K.K.A. So you think that P.E.K.K.A. was a mistake in hindsight? And look at this. A bar barrel to give you a revenge opportunity here. Oh, yeah. So that was definitely a mistake. Um, I should have been a lot more patient there and just um, played a little more defense. But I was trying to aggro the flying machine on the P.E.K.K.A and then try to form a push from there, but um, he could definitely punish really hard for Hog's opposite lane, so that was not a good idea. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're, when you're watching a replay after a loss, uh, I'm sure like you're so, you know, in, you coach so much and you're so skilled by this point that you, you might not have to watch like every replay back, but when you do, are you just looking for like the moments where you made mistakes or do you pause and think, what could I have done better? Like, what is the process for you like? Yeah, so mainly I just look for like pivotal turning points in the match. For example, like, if I, I usually watch replays where I feel like I'm, I was pretty much in control, and then something went wrong at the very end. Um, so usually I, I like to see, like, turn, key turning points and see what I could have done better. Okay. Man, he is stacking up a million troops, giving you some potential poison value here, but, oh, that was actually even better. <laughs> yeah, oh, but he gets flying. a lot of damage here. Yeah. Um, the P.E.K.K.A. may have been, like, a slight overcommit. I'm not sure. Um, I think the fact that the e -Wiz was killed behind the P.E.K.K.A. was a problem, because I think the P.E.K.K.A. was fine on its own, but yeah. I should have just played it a little bit earlier because it got sniped too early. Alright, so here we go. This is a, a very interesting deck. It's it's another kind of... I was going to say it could be Graveyard, but it's probably not. He has Fireball in there. It's probably just another kind of weird... No, it's, it's, it's the Siege deck again. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's a little bit trickier since yeah he's he's sort of in control of the match right now like yeah. he's dictating the tempo a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult. Ooh, the cannon cart comes down. Yeah, there it is. It's kind of like the updated version of that deck. And boy, is it annoying. Nice poison though, and a nice bar barrel. Gonna be able to handle this just fine. Cannon cart rendered uh, incapacitated, I guess, in the uh, in the right lane. But the problem is, is like this deck is this these decks are so annoying, man. I mean, they're fun to play, but they're so annoying to go against because you just get so much value out of that bar putt. Yeah, I, I couldn't play an Electric Wizard to retarget the Magic Archer because it would just get killed by the Flying Machine, or tried the Cannon Cart that was still alive at that point. So I just yeah. had to eat some damage. I haven't actually gotten a chance to push Raw Hogs yet because um, if I do, then he just gets a lot of value defense and just counter pushes. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be really difficult for me to ever, <laughs> like, breakthrough in this in situation yeah this is a real tough one man and that's gonna be yeah. gg the bar putt decks back to back getting you and now we're making it really interesting here as we go into the 12th match again so let's hope that he can pull off this next one and, and no more of these bar putt control decks jeez yeah all right we're gonna go ahead and search because that last search actually took a while and we'll come back uh, right back to you guys when he finds a match okay, I got, okay, I got okay, a match. here we go yeah, yeah. All right, guys, here we go against Serial Jesus. TM from Clannibus TM. <laughs> oh, man, I'm really afraid of the TM. Yeah, you got to be careful, man. All right, here we go. I'm going to let you focus here because we want a big victory. Going to bar barrel the fire spirits. So seeing those fire spirits isn't a great thing, but you got to assume, at least I'm going to assume, that he's playing the same E-Drag deck because i just seen it everywhere in GCs today, winning a bunch of them. Actually, I oh, stand corrected. It's, uh, it's a Royal Giant deck. Yeah. How do you feel about Royal Giant? This is actually okay. It's it's okay. It's good, if I had right? Battle Ram. Okay. Yeah, it, it's good. Obviously, because I have Pekka. Yeah. But it can be tricky because you can stun if lock he gets the Pekka hell out of cycle, him too. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. But, but it's gonna be this. hard for me to break through myself. Yeah, yeah that's true. And you gotta figure he has lightning. Let's forget it. Get it. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Can you activate this? My cycle's like nah. Terrible. Yeah. Ooh. I tried to. Yeah. <laughs> it was tough with the drag when the e drag is on the outside like that. It's a little bit tough. Yeah, if it's if it's like placed in the middle, it's a little bit easier. Yeah, I could have placed my Rogo slightly to the left. That probably would have activated it. Yeah. But, um, I haven't done that enough to the point where I could do it like pretty much every single time. Basically, so. like a nice, uh, you know, it, it might not be exactly this tile, but what I try to do is just go like is is directly in between the princess and the king. Um, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. So he's setting it up again with the. The furnace in the back here. He does give you kind of a, a opening if you can cycle back to the... But maybe he's just trying to bait it out. I don't know. Yeah. Like, 
I could have punished really hard with that lightning earlier, but I just didn't have the, the cards in cycle for it. Gotcha. Because usually you don't want to, like, lightning and magic archer in, like, the first two minutes of the game. It's just too much yeah. of a commitment. Yeah. Okay. Nice royal ghost there. He's going to fire a spirit, but you're going to get a nice little connection here. As you said earlier in this video, even a couple cogs on the tower for a second can uh, can do some work. Going to get some yeah. nice defense out of these zappies here. Meanwhile, that royal ghost is getting a lot of damage on that right tower. You have Bar Barrel back in cycle if you need it. Can use it here, can he? Doesn't really matter. His first royal giant. You've got Pekka ready. There she goes. He uses guards opposite lane, which is actually good for you. Yeah, I don't know why he wasted guards there. Yeah, because you really want to obviously, you know, not tell my viewers anything they don't know, but you really want to save those guards for the Pekka to help support. Uh, he's, yeah. He's able to handle the Pekka, but. You're gonna go in with another. Ooh, nice poison. Unfortunately, fire spirits are too fast. But he wastes his furnace. And the fire spirits are insane. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You have Pekka ready. This time he has his. Uh, okay. Come on, whoop. No, 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 no. Ah! <laughs> it sucks when the royal giant gets the, that last hit in. It's like, no! Oh, yeah. So much damage. I need to be careful not to let him outcycle my Pekka, so, yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, no. Alright. Yeah. If I can defend here, let's see. Okay. So he's going to be sitting on those fire spirits, he's ready for ya. Nice. Come on. Okay, he's gonna fire spirit ya. You're gonna poison him. I'm trying to like sack more troops in the lane. Hopefully Come on, baby. Come on, lane. baby. Come on, baby. Get it. Get it. Get it. Come on. Oh. Come on. Take your time, Magic Archer. Get it done. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I thought you had that loss. I was like, no, our video. Yeah, I can, I can tell the tone of your voice. It was like you're doubting me for a sec. <laughs> I was doubting you. I'll admit yeah. it. I was doubting. I'm sure my viewers, were you doubting him, guys, or did you think he had oh, it? Oh, man. That last Let's Royal go. Giant push, I'm like... Let's freaking go. I'm like, no, oh, <laughs> no, no, the Royal Giant. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I was saying, like, if, as, as long as he can defend here, I know he can get a fat counter push. So okay. all I need to do is, like, stack a lot of units because he doesn't have Fireball. And if I knew if I could get the, the, Royal, sorry, the Fire Spirits out of cycle, then I could stack a lot more units, so... Hey, oh man, that was a really fun video, man. Thank you for the exciting yeah. conclusion. Not only making it 12-2, giving us a heart attack, but also waiting till the very last second with like 300 HP left on your tower. So, uh, Brandon, yeah. thanks no, I, again. I made a 200 IQ play by purposely losing the, the previous yes. two games just to make it close. It was yeah. so obvious. We, we, we were right, read right through you there, man. Uh, but oh, dude, yeah. thanks so much for coming on. Uh, always a great guest to have on the channel. Thanks for sharing the deck. Any uh, shout outs, anything that we should know about uh, in the life of Brandon? Oh yeah, not really. I mean, um, right now I'm like the Clash Royale League season is over for CLG. Um, we were like one win off from the playoffs. We were really yeah. close. Um, a few things could have happened better, but it, it is what it is. So I had a really great time, um, just you know, helping the team. Because um, you know, I'm a satellite player, so I I can't actually um, play because I, I have school. But um, other than that, like it's going pretty well. I'm not sure what I'm doing for season two, but um, I'll have some news on that soon. Awesome. Well, we're excited to hear yeah. the news. Hopefully, you'll be a player or a, or a coach or a manager or something uh, live in yeah. 2019. But we'll wait and see. Brandick, I'll have your player stats and profile along with your Twitter and all your social media information in the description below. Uh, thanks so much for coming on, man. Appreciate it. No problem. Always great to be on. All right, guys, that's going to do it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, huge shout out to Brandon again and to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information in the description below. Thank you so much, guys. And as always, take care, guys.